so much of what we need to do as floral designers is hone our own design skills and get really good at our craft. And I know that it can feel so frustrating to just be like, she looks like she can just wake up and roll out of the bed. <laughs> like always looks so effortless and easy. I am not a naturally gifted designer. I am not somebody who can just wake up and be like, yeah, I'm gonna throw something together and it always looks effortless and beautiful. <laughs> In actual fact, it's taken me a lot of hours and a lot of practice to figure out the kind of floral design that I really like. One of the things I've always found super helpful in terms of talking to other floral designers is really understanding their thought process and being able to deconstruct and get into the brains of some of my favorite florists is how I've figured out how I wanna create the work I wanna create. So today I wanted to talk you through three of my favorite design shortcuts to make it easier for you to create the kind of work you want to create and do it faster. I will leave a bunch of links in the video description, including the pricing models to follow the final recipe in terms of what I landed on and the actual link to the container that I use. And enough jibber jabber. Let's get into my three favorite design shortcuts. Shortcut number one is shift your focus. This is something that I've picked up from the world of cooking. So much of the output of a recipe is about picking the right ingredients to begin with. So when you shift your focus, it's really about understanding that so much of the output, so much of that final design is going to be dictated by the ingredients you choose in the beginning. Pick beautiful ingredients to begin with and you will love the final product. One of my favorite thoughts is the idea that 80% of the outcome is determined by your ingredients selection. This really helped me shift my focus away from buying a whole bunch of stuff and hoping that I would just be inspired and that I could just figure it out when I had the flowers in front of me. I spent so many late nights, particularly Friday nights, trying to create work for my clients and I would end up in so much frustration and disappointment because I just hated the end product. Now I shift my focus so that there's just as much importance put on the actual ingredients selection and making sure that I like the look of those ingredients together even before I get to the mechanics or the construction piece of the puzzle. This shift in emphasis and focus has really helped me understand the design process in its entirety. I honestly thought that people just woke up and they could just magically put things together. I didn't realize how much thought and intention goes into each stage of the process. So this idea of really understanding that you get to shift the emphasis and instead of just thinking that it's all about what's happening in your hand at the moment, it's really appreciating the fact that design and floral design is a process and there are multiple steps to making the magic happen and I love the idea of putting way more emphasis on the actual ingredient selection so that it takes the pressure off of having to figure everything out at the last minute when you're trying to produce something when you're trying to construct something and everybody's watching you and you're under a time pressure and you are hot and sweaty. Shortcut number two is edit your stems and this is something that I don't even know when I actually picked this up or when I learned this, but the idea of really understanding that the construction happens through every individual stem of your design. And if I pull that and tease that apart a little bit more, the idea is you don't have to accept the stem as it is. You're allowed to pull off all of the foliage. You're allowed to manipulate the flowers. You're allowed to make each stem give you the look that you want to create. It's kind of like if we go back to the analogy of being a chef in a restaurant, the chef and the team actually prepare so many of their ingredients in a way to suit the recipe. Even if they've decided they're having carrots in their final product, they have to figure out how to prepare those carrots. Same thing goes with your ingredients in your floral design. Being able to pick your ingredients with a lot of intention and purpose and then actually go in and edit them so that you can create the look that you want to create. And this is about bringing much more intentionality to the design process. And I have 
fallen in and fallen out of love with foliage itself over time and I keep kind of finding different instances where I love the look of no greenery and then other instances where I do appreciate the robustness that greenery can bring to the situation but for this particular design I did go through and actually clip off every single one of the green foliage touch points on my flowers because I just didn't want to have that look overpowering the color palette in this particular container. The other thing that I will do because I am not a fan of the little shooters that are on Elysianthus. I love the bloom and I want the bloom to be the center of attention so I will go through and I will cut off the little buds and I will actually go in and peel back each one of the Elysianthus before I even start designing. And the last couple of ingredients to prepare for this arrangement are the roses and I have pulled out the center on these shimmer roses and yes if you look closely you will notice that I spray painted that baby's breath. This is one of my favorite shortcuts to be able to create color palettes in whatever colors you want. And my last design shortcut is I want you to give yourself permission to create your own process. One of the things that is so common in our industry and one of the things that I had to unlearn in my formal floristry certification is that there truly is no one right way to do anything in floristry. The most important thing is that you are covering up your mechanics and you are making it appear as though it is as close to magic as humanly possible but the actual avenue to get you there is so variable and it so depends on the kind of work you want to be creating on the actual mechanics that you're using on the kinds of ingredients that you want to be using and there are so many things to take into consideration and the most important piece is to let go of the idea that there is one right way to do anything once you can open yourself up to that freedom and that curiosity and give yourself so much space and time to play around be okay with learning every single mechanic under the sun find the mechanics that work for you combine them in unique ways to allow yourself to create the work that you want to create and you will expand so much more as a creative and so much more as an entrepreneur but the minute that you kind of feel yourself being tied down to a particular mechanic or a particular approach is when you're going to start to hate and resent this work. <laughs> Let's say that from personal experience. So go out there, play around, learn from your favorite designers, invest in your own education and just keep going. This is what I love the most about being a floral designer and a creative entrepreneur is that it is the perfect vehicle to always be learning. I do hope that that has been super helpful. As I said, feel free to take this recipe, make it your own. If you hated this recipe, then I'm surprised that you're still watching this video. But again, permission granted to take this recipe, adapt it for your foliage preferences, for your ingredients preferences, anything that you want, you can have it. And do let me know in the comments below if this kind of video has been helpful for you, if you'd love to see more design tutorials. So my friends, please take care of yourself and I'll see you again next week. Just give me your input. Let me know what kind of foam-free designs you'd like to see and I'd be more than happy to create it for you in the new year.